Okay, and we're live. All right, so today we have ourselves an iPod Classic with a dock or a charge port that's just not turning on anymore or not working. So this one was brought in here. This is one of the thicker iPod Classics, and I've gone ahead and opened it just to save about 10, 15 minutes of uh, just watching me pry this open uh, so that we can kind of do this repair quickly since it is the middle of the work day. Um, so here we have the iPod Classic is in fact turned on. However, whenever we plug it in to our 30 pin, normally at the top we would have a charging icon, but we're no longer getting that. So it looks like that the charge pins or the pins inside of the actual charge port are either damaged or um, just no longer doing their job. They might be oxidized. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom in on this real quick so you can see there is no charging indicator. It just shows that the battery life uh, is near depletion. So this is a micro soldering job. For this, we will actually have to remove the logic board from the frame so that we can solder on a replacement charge port here. So this is a charge port that I picked up from Mobile Centrix. It's a 30 pin. And it is all just a whole bunch of tiny little pins that are going to have to be soldered onto the main logic board. So I'm going to go ahead and finish removing the logic board from this iPod so that we can conduct the uh, repair on that. So if you watched my recent stream on the iPod Classic headphone jack replacement, one of the most crucial steps when it comes to opening up the iPod is making sure that you properly disconnect the battery before... Um, removing the back frame. Uh, too many times people end up uh, ripping off the battery terminal on the actual logic board rather than uh, just safely ejecting the battery, um, which then causes you to have another logic board issue. So I'm gonna put this underneath the microscope just so you can see the proper way how to remove the battery. So the battery is held down with this little brown connector right here. And so what we're gonna do is just grab a plastic spudger so I don't short anything out. And we're just gonna lift up. This is one of those force connections. So when it's pushed down, it locks the battery terminal into place or the battery connection to the battery terminal. So now that that is disconnected, should be able to just pull that out. The battery terminal is still perfectly fine. So now we can go ahead and finish unplugging the rest of the connections on the motherboard, the logic board. And that's going to be the headphone jack and the hard drive connection. We didn't remove the hard drive connection in the last video because we were just replacing the headphone jack. But for this, we're going to have to unplug everything, including the screen, the um, scroll wheel button, the hard drive. So for this, we're just going to use a plastic spudger so that we can lift up the jaw connector and simply unplug our flex cables. Now, if you can't really see what I'm doing, again, I'll do it underneath the microscope. So here we have, for instance, the LCD connection. And let me get this in focus for you guys. So I'm just going to take the flat end of a, a pry tool, plastic, uh, black stick, a spudger, and we're going to now just pull this cable out. And we're gonna do that to pretty much all of our connections here. Now this one is a little trickier because Apple decided to glue this down, but as you can see, this flex cable here for our scroll wheel, it actually goes underneath our frame. So I'm actually gonna remove this once we remove the uh, logic board from the frame. So I'll skip that for now. Let's go down to the hard drive. So the hard drive itself, uh, it uses a connection called a ZIF connector. Uh, we also have these little rubber spacers to help absorb shock. I'm gonna remove these out of the way so I can bend the hard drive back a little bit and set those in a little screw tray so that I don't lose them. And there, uh, ZIF stands for Zero Insertion Force Connection. We're going to lift up this little plastic jaw connector and there's a little bit of double-sided adhesive underneath this flex cable. So we want to gently pull on this cable. We don't want to cause too much force. And let me see if I can actually lift up some of the adhesive from the backside. And that looks to be working well for us. So I'm just gently using the pry tool to separate the flex cable from the adhesive. 
These are very, very delicate flex cables. We really don't want to apply too much pressure. You can also use a little bit of heat from like a rework station or if you're at home, uh, truthfully, a hair dryer. Um, don't really recommend always using a hair dryer, but sometimes you got to work with what you got. All right, so our flex cable has been removed from our double-sided adhesive, and now the hard drive is extracted. So now we're at the point to where we have to remove the actual frame from the logic board or the logic board from the frame. So there is a little mid frame right here that is attached to the front facing frame and it's held together with a total of six Phillip head screws, uh, three on each side. So for that, I have myself just a handy screw tray just so I don't lose these screws because they are very tiny screws. All right, so here we're just going to start removing these screws. And I'm sorry if my voice or my hands seem a little shaky. I did just drink a cup of coffee and ate a red velvet cookie before I started the stream. I haven't really had lunch yet, so that's just a very quick and poor technician's lunch. So it just got caffeine and sugar running through my veins right now. All right. So now that we have our six screws removed, we're going to have to actually peel or separate this mid-frame from the face of the iPod. I don't know what the technical term is. Um, and there is a little bit of adhesive, believe it or not, that is actually holding this together. So again, I'm going to end up just using my pry tool here to try to separate. So let's start at the bottom. And you can see, I'm trying to just get the pry tool in the center there, and I can actually hear the adhesive separating from the face plate. That's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it a face plate. So the frame is actually holding the LCD back plate in place. So I don't want to lift this up too much because then we'll end up dropping the LCD. But you can see now I have a good separation of our mid frame from our face plate. So now, should be able to just kind of rock it back and forth. And pull the mid-frame from the faceplate. Now this faceplate is just being held in, or the LCD is just being held onto the faceplate with nothing more than these two tiny plastic standoffs. I also don't want to lift up the LCD because we could potentially get dust in it and uh, then just have to clean out it doesn't really look professional. So I'm going to leave this as is and just kind of set this to the side. So now we are left with the mid frame, the logic board, and the scroll wheel. Now if you remember earlier I said that the flex cable for the uh, scroll wheel is actually underneath the frame. It's actually um, where you need to pull the logic board out in order to separate that cable. So on this model the logic board actually has two Phillips screws that are underneath the click wheel. So I'm going to switch over to the microscope camera again so you can get a better look at this. The click wheel is held together with nothing more than basically double-sided adhesive. So let's lift that up and you can see the two Phillips screws. So let's just go ahead and try pulling this out from underneath the microscope. Yeah, let's try from this side. It's kind of hard to get the Phillips head screwdriver underneath the microscope camera. All right, now before we actually just pull this board, the board itself is also double sided adhered to the mid frame. So sometimes you can just take a pry tool and separate it, but I'm having to give this kind of an uncomfortable amount of bending that I'm actually going to heat this up a little bit with um, just a heat gun. Um, not with anything too intense, uh, just a very low heat that honestly uh, would be perfect for like a hair dryer. Um, something that's not necessarily any plastic, but just warm enough to loosen up the adhesive. So here I have myself just a heat gun. It's a Porter Cable uh, heat gun that I picked up at Lowe's. Um, but we're just going to keep this on a lower setting so we don't cause any damage to the main logic board. And I'm going to peel back the scroll wheel and just go around the mid frame, the logic board, and kind of loosen up some of the adhesive. And let's flip it over 
also apply some heat onto the back. Really not too much. This doesn't have to be super hot. You don't want to be able to burn yourself. We're just getting this warm so that we can pry this off easier. And I think that's a good temperature right there. Let's turn off the heat gun and go back to what we were doing earlier with the, our pry tool. Yeah, much, much easier. I'm going to get this under the scope so that you can see this, how easy this is coming up now. So a second ago, you saw I was bending it, and it just really wasn't budging. But now, this is peeling up much easier. So if you're ever fighting anything that has been adhered, just has any type of glue, a little bit of heat goes a very long way. Now, before I actually begin this repair, I want to inspect the logic board itself to make sure why is this not working? Are the pins on the back of the 30 pin connector here, are they physically pushed in? Are they physically damaged? Is there any obvious signs of component failure? Because this could actually be a charging circuit issue, uh, which truthfully I don't have schematics for the iPod Classic, so if it's a charging circuit issue, Absolutely. I may not be able to fix. So right now we're just kind of going off of past experience that it looks like it is a charge port, a dock replacement. So let's put this back underneath the microscope and check and see what we have. Oh, and actually, while we're at this point, we can go ahead and remove our scroll wheel. So the scroll wheel, as mentioned, has a little bit of adhesive. So now that the board is still a little warm, I should be able to use the flat end of our spudger here and lift up. There we are. So now we have just the bare logic board. Now, you can see there's a little bit of, there's a, like this metal shield here, probably for grounding or structural support, and then a piece of tape. So let's go ahead and remove this grounding plate. Aha, and I do see our damage already. So this is actually going to be more than just a simple charge port replacement. We have oxidized or missing pins. Let me flip this around, get a better angle. So if we zoom in here, you can see we actually just have missing pins entirely. So the interesting thing here is how those pins are missing. Almost looks like this has been pried. There's actually a lot of pins. So almost every single pin, you see this? I'm able to just move, which means that they're not even soldered on. These pads are gone entirely. These pads just aren't even soldered on. So we can see like this trace right here that goes to this coil is completely missing. So we're actually going to have to solder a wire from this coil to that pin. Same thing here. And my fear is that there might be some vias, which just means a trace that goes from this side of the board to the other side of the board that are missing. And if they are, I may not actually be able to fix this. And you can see each of these tiny little dots here represent a via that goes to the other side of the board. So let's go ahead and start with just removing this charge port. Um, for that, oh, we can even see some of this plastic here. Actually, you can see like this entire part of the iPod is just completely lifting up. So really the only thing I'm going to have to desolder, since it looks like every single pin here is damaged, is going to be the grounding pins on the outside. So the easiest way to remove anything that's a grounding pin is to apply some flux and some new solder. That way, as we melt it, the solder that we're putting on here, it has a little bit of lead in it. Typically, factory solder is unleaded, which just melts at a higher temperature. So by applying leaded solder, we can melt at a lower temperature. It's going to mix in with the factory solder and lift up a lot easier. And actually, the peculiar thing here that I'm looking at that fuse, it doesn't look factory, but the rest of this iPod so far has been factory. So I don't think we're in a situation to where this was a prior repair attempt. Um, I'm honestly under the impression that the 30 pin cable was plugged into the dock and then it was bent up, which ripped all the pins off of the actual charge port itself. So let's go ahead and flip over to the microscope camera. And we need some solder. Turn on our fume extractor. And turn on our 
hot iron. Okay, so now we should be able to go ahead, put a little bit of solder on the existing solder. And then we can heat this up with a heat gun. But now that I'm looking at this, we have our plastic ZIF connector right there for our hard drive. So I'm actually going to do this differently. What I'm going to do instead is since all of these pads here for the charge port have been ripped off, I would use a heat gun so we can melt all these. However, I'm really just focusing on these four pads. I'm just actually going to go ahead and wick this up. That way, with no solder existing, I can push the charge port out. So for that, I have to get some wick. And let me cut this down to size real fast. Okay, so I have some wick here on some tweezers. And then what we're going to do is put the wick over the solder pad. And you can see right there, now we have kind of a clear hole. Let me try to get this in focus for you guys, because I know that this camera is decent. It's not that great. All right, we're going to do the same thing up here. Yep, and we got a nice, clean through hole. You can actually see that some of the, ac the pins right there are actually wiggling. Let's move down here to this side, and I'm going to need to switch to the other part of my wick. And let's see if we can wick these both up at the same time. Just by laying the wick on top of the pads, this should be sucking it both up. But my wick is fully loaded, so now we need another piece of wick. I already have a piece cut right here. All right. And a little bit more right here. Okay, so now we're at a point to where this part of the pins have been wicked up, and we should be able to pull the entire thing out. Yeah, see, this is just ripping to pieces. So now we have our charge port removed. If the pads were actually soldered on still, we would have used a heat gun, but in this case, I ended up just desoldering the standoffs. So now we no longer need this. And before I go any further, I'm going to clean up this area with some acetone and a Q-tip. Yeah, that's the batteries expanding on that yeah, one. So what do we, do this guy? we can replace the battery for him. Okay. What was uh, the repair on this one? You as well, thanks.
I greatly apologize. However, it seems like uh, I'm going to have to stop this repair. Uh, a more important repair just came in that's a little bit more time pressing. So this is going to be a two-parter. I'm going to stop this for now, and I'm going to restart the stream. Uh, and then I'm probably just going to end up just making a video compiling this all into one video. So, uh, so far, I appreciate you guys joining me. And I will resume soldering on the new traces uh, in a little bit, hopefully by the end of today. So, I will see you guys all in the next one. Have a good one.